Okay, we thought we would do this video to give some very simple, practical, sensible tips of what to do to defend yourself against dogs. Because this is something that has come up. People have asked us. There's a lot of stray dogs around. Sometimes people don't have their dogs contained and it can be a potentially dangerous situation. Also recently in the news, we saw a clip of a woman who was at the beach with her small dog and a larger dog came running at them. Looked like it attacked a small dog and it was running at her. We thought we would provide some quick tips that would be useful in such a situation. Before we start, allow me to introduce our assistants. Dad, Toki, come on. Sit down. Stay. Toki, sit down. Good girl. To make this easy to remember, I will give you A, B, C. Just remember A, B, C. This is the order you want to remember these things in because this is the order of execution. The A stands for avoid, okay? You want to be aware of your surroundings, as aware as possible of where you're going so that you can avoid a potentially dangerous situation to begin with. So scope out the area. If you see dogs that are not contained that look like they could be an issue, try to see if the owners are around and let them know to contain the dogs or make sure that you feel safe. Or just avoid areas to begin with where there are stray dogs tend to hang out or you think might be a risk. That's the first thing, avoid. Then you don't have an issue, period. The B stands for bolt, which means get the hell out of there. If you see a situation where, like in this video we saw on the news, it looked like the woman was just maybe leaving the beach or going to the beach, I couldn't tell. And the dog started running at her and her smaller dog. And that's what she did. She bolted, but it was kind of too late because the dog was too close. And if you just run while a dog is chasing you, then the instincts of the dog are gonna take over and they are definitely gonna chase you. And you're probably not gonna outrun a dog unless you're already further enough away or you have an escape plan, something to get over. I'm gonna show you a very quick way to get up onto an elevation if there's one nearby or over a fence. The easiest way to get up over a fence or onto an elevation is by using what we'll call the safety vault. You need to first support yourself on your hands and then you need to get one foot up to give you the leverage to get up. So the easiest way to get up is like this. Most people would like lay their whole body on it and then try to get one leg up and try to swing the other leg up. And by the time all that happens, it's gonna to be too late if a dog's trying to get you. If a dog is trying to get you, Des, come here. See how quick that was? It's much easier to get up if you have a technique that's more efficient. And this is just the most efficient way to get up on a ledge or to get over a fence, it would work the same. Break it down, all you're doing is getting as close to the object as possible, using your hands in sync with your jump to support your hands on the object. And then you're gonna bring one leg up, either leg. And from there you can use the three points of support, the foot and the two hands to get over, okay? So that'll work for a wall or a fence that is at least low enough that you can reach with your hands and your jump combined, get at least to the point where you can support yourself on your hands, get your body weight over, and then get one foot up and get over like that. Okay, that's the easiest way. So awareness or avoid, be aware and avoid the situation. Bolt, and if you need to, if you can, bolt to a nearby fence or object that you can get up on quickly. And we just showed you a technique for that. And the C is, the last resort, is if you need to confront the animal. So we'll show you that next. Okay, so if you can avoid and bolt, then the situation is taken care of, but you may need to confront the animal. You may not be able to run away in time. There's a few things to keep in mind if that happens. Number one is animals read your energy. Okay, they're not like humans that are looking for all these other 
cues that don't really mean anything. They're just reading your energy. So, you have to be very calm. Your energy has to be calm, but it also has to be intense. If you're not used to generating intensity, then you kind of have to practice it and fake it till you make it. So that's why I think it's good for anybody to practice practical self-defense and practice things that's gonna get you in a mode where you can train yourself to be relaxed but intense at the same time because that is what the animal is gonna read. Most times, if your energy is right, you'll be able to disarm the dog without even having to even do anything. But if it's a dog that's out of control and it's gonna come at you, then you need to be able to show it that you are calm and in control, but at the same time, you're intense and ready to deal with the situation. We'll show you some techniques that could possibly turn a lethal bite or just a very, very bad bite into a bite that you can just deal with it and save your own life. So again, the energy is important and your posture says a lot. Your posture sends a huge message in terms of your energy. So if a dog is coming at me, Dad, come here. If I walk forward like this, I'm not really saying, see how it's still following me? But if I do this, okay? If I posture myself properly, and posture is not just about being loud and getting big, okay? This is a, a misconception. When people try to want to act tough, they walk around trying to take up as much space. That is, you can read that a mile away if you know what you're doing. That is not what you want to send the message. You don't want to just be loud or you don't want to come at the dog and scare it because if you scare the dog too much, it will, that could make the aggression situation even worse. What you want to do is show a calm assertiveness and like a focused energy and your posture should be protecting your center line. You don't want to be facing the dog squarely and you don't want to be open. You want to be more closed and you want to turn slightly so you're off center, okay? This is square, this is not square. You're not sideways because now that shows a flight response that you're gonna run. You're still facing the dog, but you're like this. You're guarding your center line so that it's very easy for me to just turn, turn and dip my shoulder and close off all my vital organs here, okay? Or it's very easy for me to pivot and step out of the way if I need to. So that's the basics of the posture, okay? It's a, it's a more of a closed, focused posture as opposed to a square on open big posture. The next thing is from that posture, you need to be immediately ready to deflect or block. And the two most practical ways to do that in a situation like that, again, you may not be able to avoid getting bitten, but you wanna make sure that the bite, instead of happening at your throat or somewhere in your stomach or near your vital organ, you wanna make sure that the bite happens in a safer spot, your forearm, okay? So the safest way to block is what we'll call a cross guard, which is essentially just this. If I throw something at you, you're probably gonna do something like this anyway. So that's the cross guard defense. So you're gonna do this. The only adjustment I would make to that is um, make, a, make a fist when you do it instead of open hands. Because if you ever, if you get a bite mark in an open hand, that's, that could be really severe and that could disable you from being able to, to use your hands afterwards where you may need to to get away or to, to take the next action. So make a fist and when you, when you do the cross guard, one hand goes down across the front of the body towards the hip and the other one just goes on your shoulder like this. Okay, so if you just do that, you're gonna be, and then tuck your chin, your face is protected. Okay, so just quickly like this. While the cross guard is effective and could potentially save your life, it's not enough in itself. You also have to be prepared to deliver some kind of a strike or attack to get the dog to back off. When you're here, you make a tight fist and you use this part 
of your fist. You stay in compact and you can deliver quite an effective blow that way. What is even more effective is if you can learn a simple push kick. A push kick is very effective for keeping distance between you and an attacker. Okay? I'll show you how effective it is even just with my dog right now. Yes, come here. Oh! So I can put my foot to hold him off into his body. Don't put it at his face because he can just bite your foot. But as he's coming in, he has to lunge at you like this. So you go for somewhere here and you just drive your knee up. First, you chamber your knee, so you drive it up and then you push like you're trying to kick down a door. You're gonna drive your knee up, chamber your knee up, and then it's a push. It's not a flip kick, you're not doing this, and you're not stomping, okay? You need to get your knee up, which also defends you. Yes, come here. Up, up. The knee also defends you, you see that? The knee also defends you. And from there, you can bend them off with the push kick. So it's more of a push. It's not a snap kick or a flick kick. So you're gonna drive your knee up, and then push like you're trying to kick down a door. So to recap so far, confront. First thing is your posture and your energy. You face the dog. You don't want to turn your back. So you face. You send your energy directly at the dog. You stay relaxed but intense. You make sure your posture is not open. You protect your center line, but again, you still face the dog. You have the cross guard and the push kick, a very effective defense. So you're protecting your face, you're protecting your neck, tucking your chin, you can still see. And if the dog lunges at you, you have this, you have your knee to drive up when you chamber it. Even just the knee is sufficient to hold them off, okay? But from there, you can also do the push kick. And if you deliver a sharp enough push kick to the chest area, stomach area, and you can practice that and deliver a powerful enough kick, it's probably gonna be enough to deter the dog. Next, is parrying, so the dog may be lunging at you, you do that, if it keeps coming at you, you, you may need to be able to keep parrying, or what I mean by parrying is deflecting the dog away, and I would recommend you do that with a closed fist like this, but for the purpose of demonstration, because I don't wanna injure my assistant, I'm just gonna do it with an open palm, okay? Good boy, come here, up! Up. Up. Good boy. Up. So when you when you're doing the deflecting, it's kind of just you're stepping out of the way and using the momentum of the dog to let it continue. It's coming at me. I'm stepping away and using them using its own momentum to send it. Okay? You want to step to the outside and deflect. Step to the outside and deflect if you can. And then after you do that, if you need to, you can get in a good shot and take off. Even better than that is if you can grab something nearby. A simple stick, the godfather of all weapons. If you have something like a broomstick or something this length that's a bit longer, then I like to hold it like this because you can maintain your stance, your proper posture, where you're closing off the center line, one hand like this and one hand like this, just like if you were sweeping, and from here you can deliver very powerful shots just by simply flicking it like that. That is a very, very devastating blow. If you just, like that, that's a devastating blow. You can also, Call, uh, it's like a jab. Usually when people pick up a stick, they will hold it like this and swing in it wildly like this, okay? That's not gonna be effective because once you do this, I mean, a dog is quick. So 
Once you do that, now all it has to do, if it, if it missed or if you didn't hit it hard enough, it's gonna come right back at you. But if I'm like this, Daz, come here. Come here, boy, good boy. If I'm like this, I'm always in control. I don't have to do any wild swings. All I need to do is that, 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 okay? I can come around, around, and very little subtle movements can deliver enough power to keep somebody up or keep a dog up. So to sum up, how do you defend yourself against crazy dogs that are attacking you? A, B, C. Avoid is the first thing. Have awareness, scope out the situation. Try not to put yourself in a situation where you're gonna be at risk. Failing that, if you spot the situation a little bit late, but still early enough to bolt, then the B stands for bolt. Get the hell out of there and try to find an elevation where you can use the safety vault and either get over a fence or get up onto a ledge where the dog is not likely to be able to reach you. And the last of last, but not least, is confront. If you need to confront the dog, then you need to be very aware of your energy and your posture because even if you're defending yourself using the cross guard block that we talked about, this sends a very different message than this. So you need to be still confronting, but defending at the same time. So you're blocking, but at the same time, you're also attacking if you need to. Grab something if you can, keep it in close, and use sharp but powerful um, strikes with fierce intention behind them, and do what you need to do to defend yourself. Thanks for watching. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment below. Daz, come here, boy. Sit. Yogi, come here. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. No dogs were harmed in the making of this video. Good boy. Good boy.